Welcome to the daily insights that matter. Now, the current calendar year of 2023 has seen a sharp rise in the sell downs by promoters and the private equity and venture capital investors compared to the previous years. Now, promoters have offloaded almost 87,000 crores or almost $10 billion of equities in this year, which is the highest in the past six years and more than double, which is 2.2 times that in the previous year. Now, the majority of promoter selling has been concentrated in sectors such as automobiles and auto components, capital goods, electric utilities, IT services, and transportation. Now, during the period from 2018 to 2023, insurance and IT services were the primary sectors in which promoters sold their holdings. Now, a substantial portion of promoter sales is related to holding companies looking to raise funds to manage what they perceive as high debt levels in their promoter holding companies as observed in the case of companies like Adani Group and Vedanta. Now, additionally, a significant portion of promoter sales is driven by one of the promoters exiting a company for strategic reasons, which could be similar to portfolio optimization as seen in the case of HDFC Life. Moreover, the current record high stock market provides an attractive opportunity for promoters who had increased their stakes between 2020 and 2023 when the valuations were low and their businesses were undervalued by the markets to offload some of their non-core holdings at favorable prices. The accelerated exits by the PE and VC investors can be attributed to favorable secondary market conditions that enable them to sell their holdings to institutional, which is both foreign and domestic investors, along with the retail investors. While private equity investments often span across multiple years, exits tend to cluster around times when various factors converge to create above average market valuations. Now, these sell-offs have led to a decline in the promoter ownership in the BSC 200 index, dropping from 50.3% in the month of December 2022 to 48.8% in the June 2023 quarter. Now, in contrast, domestic investors have increased their combined holdings by 90 basis points to reach 23.5% by the end of June 2023. Foreign portfolio investors have seen a modest rise of 0.26 percentage points bringing their ownership to 21.7% over the same period. Now, other investors such as alternate investment funds and PMSs have increased their holdings by 0.31 percentage to 6% points. Now, these recent divestments by promoters and PE investors underscore the growing depth and liquidity of Indian markets, making it possible to execute large block deals with minimal discounts. Now, according to data from the Reserve Bank of India, in the first quarter of this financial year, India's current account deficit got a bit wider, hitting $9.2 billion, which is about 1.1% of the GDP. But when you compare it to the same time last year, it's actually improved a bit. Now, a current account deficit, as we all know, occurs when the value of the country's exports of goods and services and other revenues is lower than the value of imports of goods and services. Now, the trade deficit typically constitutes the largest portion of a current account deficit. Now, to break down the latest numbers, in the first quarter of the previous year, which is the first quarter of FI23, India had a current account deficit of $17.9 billion, which was about 2.1% of the GDP. So it's better than that at least. But it's still wider compared to the previous quarter when it was at $1.3 billion or at 0.2% of the GDP. Now, here's why it's happening. It's mainly because of this trade deficit thing. Trade deficit happens when a country is buying more stuff from other countries than it's selling and that's what's going on in India. The trade deficit is getting bigger because India's merchandise exports have slowed down considerably. People in Western countries and China aren't buying as much stuff from India as they used to before. But on the bright side, service exports are doing pretty well, going up by about 22.8% in the March quarter. But experts are a bit worried about the demand slowing down for software and banking services worldwide. Now, India really loves its oil, but it's not so great because it has to import a lot of it. And lately, crude oil prices have been going through the roof like above $90 a barrel in the month of September, and they're inching closer to $100 as much as yesterday. Now, this is making the current account deficit even wider. So if we look into the future a bit, ICRA, which is a research agency, is projecting that the current account deficit could balloon to somewhere between $73 and $75 billion, which would be around 2.1% of the GDP for all of the financial year 2024. That's up from $67 billion or 2% of the GDP in the previous financial year. With that, this is Raj Mehta signing off, wishing you and your loved ones the very best. Thank you. Did you like watching this video? Then download our app, Informed Investor, to watch more such informative and interesting videos.
Equity investments are subject to market risk. Read all investment related documents carefully. Visit www.researchandranking.com.